old to the new, still a b-boy, too bold for the school, still a b-boy, east coast to the west, b-boys worldwide, we supposed to be blessed, still a b-boy, from the old to the new. What's up everyone, we got a new type of episode, no interview this week, we're doing what I call a hip-hop round table. We got five of us. We're going to rank the top 10 West Coast albums, in our opinion. So I got myself, you know who I am. I got my man, Bradley Sadler, ex-writer for Murder Dog Magazine. You've seen him on the show. What's up? Uh, yeah. <laughs> From 101st Airborne Productions. You know him. The Hurricane. Kane. Best man at my wedding back Bradley. in the day. What is up, Kane? What's up? We got Underground East Coast MC representing Fifth Power Entertainment. What's up, Raven Hunter? What's up, Jada? And last but not least, we got from Rip Black Entertainment, my man Rip Black. I'm not seeing his little picture up on top, but I think you're still here, right? Yeah, I'm here. What's up, All everybody? Right. All right. All right, let's do this. So my number 10 album came out in 1988. Ice-T's Power, the most iconic album cover in hip-hop history. I don't care what any of you say, but I picked this one because at the time, gang, what we call gangster rap was so new. Actually, Ice called it a uh, crime rhyme back then. I don't even think the term gangster rap was even invented in 88. But off the success of uh, Ryan Pays the year before, I really picked Power because Ron Pace kind of started the gangster rap trend, but it still sounded very uh, mid early 80s type. If you really listen to the beats, a lot of um, early 80s sounding like you listen to Grandmaster Flash or something. But here he had songs like I'm Your Pusher, High Rollers, Personal, and every kid's favorite girls, let's get buck naked and fuck. Um, <laughs> and like I said, the, uh, the album cover was just uh, it was so awesome iconic so that's my number 10 pick i don't know if any of you got anything to say on it otherwise next up i got rip black what's your number 10 man i i had trouble like ranking them too like that and plus um let's see i would say maybe e40 in a major way would be a 10 um it was just so different and i mean he had Pac on there and everything but to me, I mean, that's my number 10. I don't have a, a whole lot to say about that one. Right that's the now. one with Sprinkle Me, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. And Dusted and Disgusted is on there. That's one yep. with Pac and Spice One, right? right. Yep. Yeah, that one, that's probably yeah. my favorite E40 one. It's, had a I don't know what's on my list. Like, that one I had to leave off my list. It was real close. Yeah, that's a dope album, no doubt. I love yeah, that. that song. Yeah, Sprinkle Me is the shit. Yeah. Raven, you are up next. What you got at number 10? All right, so this was super hard. Um, I probably could have had 25 easy. Uh, my number 10, I went with uh, the DOC, No One Can Do It Better. Um, I know that he wasn't originally from, from California, but that's where he planted his roots and um, founded his career. Um, he wrote all the NWA and Easy e hits before that. Um, Dre had some of, some of his best work, I think, and it really, like, the formula was the birth of the whole G-Funk sound, so, like, I definitely have to get you uh, do DOC number 10. Yeah, absolutely. That that was on my list of my short list that just didn't quite make it. And then I thought, well, he's originally from Texas, so that was what I used. But he's definitely, I look him in as a West Coast artist, so I think that works. But DOC, probably the biggest what if in hip hop history. He doesn't get in that car crash, lose his voice. He might go down yeah. as one of the best MCs ever. I think he would have. He kind of rivaled like Rakim and then with his lyricism. You didn't get a lot of that from the West Coast back then. So no, yeah, DLC was a shit. And like you said, even yeah. after he lost his voice, he was writing for the Chronic. He was yep. writing, you know, all those NWA uh, records. Yeah, DLC was on my honorable mentions. Yeah, 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 mine too. All right, Hurricane, what you got at number ten? I got too short. Get in where you fit in. You know, it was probably. Well, it was probably the second album that I heard that was so raunchy. The first one was uh, Nasty As You Want To Be. But it was just, you know, that that pimp sound, that um, that Oakland sound that I had never heard before. You know, I never heard Oakland represented like that until Get In Where You Fit In. 
Oh yeah, the production from Ant Banks on there was just crazy. Top, Ant Banks, top notch. Yeah. yeah, he doesn't get enough love. Ant Banks, nowhere near enough. Right, and that was yeah. another one on my list that just missed it. I was like thirteen, so blowjob Betty was like. <laughs> <laughs> it was <a> shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, every thirteen year old is gonna like two short rhymes, right? <laughs> oh, I, can, I can I can relate. I was like twelve or thirteen myself. All right, last but not least, what you got, Bradley Sadler? Uh, I got the last one I wrote for uh, was DJ Quick. Quick is the name. Um, yeah. I, I love that album, but it, it could be higher. Like we could argue that I didn't really rank them, but um, uh, one of my favorite, I mean, pretty much DJ quick in the late eighties through the early nineties, you could have picked, I could have picked any album, but that was the first one. That's the one I was introduced to me and my friends would ride around, you know, playing that album. And so uh, it, it's classic. And he's, he's done so much working with Tupac later and, um and he's still i mean the stuff he puts out the last thing he did with problem uh still one of my favorite so uh i had to include him in my top 10 yeah that's a classic album quick as the name yeah sweet like pussy was the big song off that album right right <laughs> that's the one where he uh in the middle of his rhyme he acts like he loses his place and he's shuffling the papers yeah <laughs> i thought that was the illest, illest thing to do I, yeah. I thought that was so such a interesting uh, i think tonight's on there too that was that right was the tonight. Big, that, tonight was the big single which is that song is the yeah, eight the ball was on too. there yep all right i'm gonna do number nine i doubt this one will be on anyone's list but i, I could be wrong i could be wrong this is as west coast gangsta as gangsta gets south central cartels murder squad album bro this right here is west coast personified they not only the production and just the, the rhymes by uh havoc and prodigy of south central cartel but this featured a who's who of west coast artists they had songs with ice t spice one and banks trash from naughty by nature i know he's east coast big mike of the ghetto boys boss the most gangster female you'll ever hear um they had an album before this called in gats we trust which is also almost as good but this one i just love uh there's a song song no peace knock on wood pass the dank uh ghetto got me shady it's just a great album if any of you don't know it you got to check it out um you might feel like pulling a drive-by after listening to it because that's the vibe but it's a, it's a great album bro it's it, it's crazy it's number nine on my list man that's the same <laughs> fucking album that's insane <laughs> it's awesome yeah because i mean everything you covered you know Gunsmoke was killer knock on wood but shakilla was one of my favorite female rappers and young money from young murder squad uh was on the album like three times like i just i fucking loved it ice t killed that shit right no peace that, no yeah. peace is one of my favorite posse tracks maybe ever i mean yeah. it's in my top 10 it's amazing definitely right. such a dope album I don't yeah. know if you can get a better posse track than the last track on Ghetto Boys Till Death Do Us Part. You'd have to be pretty fucking good. That, that is a great posse track. And then when uh, Scarface comes in at the end, he just kills oh. it. Just yes. It's the return of the motherfucking dreadlock. Putting fools in headlocks. I mean, he just kills it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, um, the, the posse track on South Central is Gas We Trust. Mm -hmm. uh, gang, I think Gang Team is what it was called. It had, you know, Spice One, team. Tupac. Gangsta team. team, yes. Yeah. Spice, Tupac. Yeah. yeah, that was a killer MCA, posse track. MCA was yep. on it. Yep. That was a dope. Well, track. Tupac's on that oh, yeah. posse track? That's pretty cool. Yep. I didn't know that. It's fire. Yeah. Fire track. Yeah, that, that uh, Gangsta Team. It's South Central Cartel, Ice-T, Tupac, MC8, Spice One. I mean. Yeah. I think Ant Bags produced that track too, if right. I'm not mistaken. All right, uh, since we know you're nine, what is up, Kane, at number nine? I got Exhibit Man versus Machine. Um, Ooh. Okay. I, I, Over Restless? Yeah, yeah, huh? I do. Um, and I thought I could probably put it higher than nine, but I just didn't know what I was going to put it above. You know, I can just let it play. Um, when I was going through stuff and listening to it, like, I listened to it like three times because I was like, this is just dope. Like, <laughs> put it on and do my work and just let it play. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I don't think Exhibit gets enough credit as an MC. You know, everybody knows him as Pimp My Ride, but right. he's dope. Yeah. Like, I really liked it. 
Yeah, Exhibit is a little slept on when people talk about, you know, some of the top West Coast MCs. And he's very consistent. Uh, he had a consistent run. I mean, my personal favorite is Restless. Um, but man, yeah, yeah. Machine is a good album, too. I think that what puts it over Restless for me is that uh, um, the song with Eminem on it. My name is called yeah, right? yeah. Dope song. Mm-hmm. I, I forgot that song existed, to be honest. I'm going to have to peep that out again. Yeah. yeah. All right, Brad, what you got at number nine? Or what are you going to put at number nine? Uh, I'm going to put Cypress Hill self-titled. Um, I, I, I had to pick a Cypress Cell album, and uh, I, I, I dig the first one way. I mean, the, the first one, that was when I first started getting into hip-hop. Um, my friends and I would just ride around listening to that album. I've seen Cypress Hill prob- live probably like six or seven times. They put on an amazing live show. And for me, it's it's that I know a lot of people. Black Sunday is the one that most people would pick, but uh, I go with the first one. It's a little more gangster than than Black Sunday. They started to get that kind of like hippie pot smoking stuff in mm-hmm. uh, in Black Sunday. No, that's a, that's my favorite Cypress Hill album too. I mean, To Kill a Man, yeah. Funky Feel One, uh, Pigs so is on there. Yeah, uh, yeah. Rip Black, what you got at number nine? All right, nine. We will go with, and I know probably not his most iconic like game-changing album but spice one black bossolini yes yes oh, okay. I that know is there's... so underrated that is a great pick that might be his yeah. best album the, that's, that's the, a good pick that the collabs on it everything was put together so well like everything and um it's crazy too because i didn't realize until i made this list that like a lot of my albums have a lot of collabs on them so it's like i don't even know it's crazy but that spice one and i know it's not like one of the big game changing ones like his first like two but the, the average person says you know 170 road or uh, america's nightmare but black bossolini i think it that it's arguably his best most complete work you know, i agree with black bossolini that's my favorite all right we're to number eight one of my favorite West Coast groups. I really wanted to put two albums from them on, but I just didn't have room. The Alcoholics XO Experience. Ooh. Now, my heart really wanted to do 21 and over because that's so iconic and was such a big record to me. But XO Experience probably is their most complete. Uh, like you said, Kevin, about um, no skipping on the exhibit track. That's how this Licks album is. I mean, it is, to me, I don't skip anything. Some of the songs I wrote down, you know, Da 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 is probably my favorite lick song of all time. It gets me so pumped up. A Barcode, Promote Violins, Run Wild, The Bubble with King T. Uh, it features songs with Exhibit, King T, Busta Rhymes, Corrupted, The Dog Pound. It just, um, the licks, they sounded West Coast, but they didn't sound West Coast. Um, and I don't know if that makes sense, but they were lyrical like a lot of East Coast groups, but they had that West Coast vibe to them. And um, Alcoholics, same as Exhibit, don't get enough love. Uh, I mean, one of my favorite groups of all time. And XO experiences. I remember riding around album. with you wearing that thing out. Wearing that. <laughs> when that it came out in 01. I mean, I yeah. played the shit out of that album. That, it is. Mm. I, what you got Reagan at eight yeah so eight like I'm gonna be real I'm not like the biggest fan of Tupac but I felt like I could not put him on the list um because I do respect what he's done uh, me against the world from 95 I think is his his best album what I would call his most complete work mm-hmm. um easily some of the best production um his vocals could have been jacked up a little bit um from that album. It sounded almost rushed I think he was going to jail at the time if I'm not right. mistaken um but you know temptation so many tears dear mama it's a very raw and a uh, personal album and that's that's kind of why I put it on the list my second favorite Tupac song of all time is on there old school yeah, yeah I got that's on my list too but I got it at like number five or something yeah I got oh, it yeah. <laughs> that's like a version of Pac we didn't see before or again I mean yeah that's very complete it felt complete the right. first Pac song I ever memorized like front to back was uh death around the corner oh yeah, yeah. That's a hell yeah. yeah that's a great one i yeah, actually I danced like with my mom <laughs> yeah 
I you danced, danced with your my mom? mom at my wedding to Dear Mama. Ah, fuck you. Yeah. Hell yeah. That's awesome. No, that's a good pick. I Kane, what you got at Red 8 still? Um, I have another Tupac album on there, All Eyes on Me. Um, I couldn't not put this on the list just with so many of the hits that are on it. Like, you just go through it. Every other song was on the radio or he made a video for. It was just hit after hit. And, you know, it's a double album. So that's a ton of songs that he just, you know, made so many hits with. I mean, that's obviously his most well-known work. And like you said, I mean, we could sit here and list song after song off of that. Yeah. I mean, you, no one could argue that that shouldn't be on anyone's top 10 list. Absolutely. It's way up there for me. Yeah, I, I knew it would make your list. And you're up next. What do you got at eight? Uh, all right. So, I mean, I, there's so many death row albums that are good and <laughs> I had to like weed. I mean, I could have, I could have just made a list of death row albums. Right. Um, but I put it number eight dog pounds, dog food. Mm. And, um, okay, I just, uh, that album is so good. I, and, and I, I could have just, just picked that album as like early era death row. Cause you still got Dre, right. He's still like right. making some beats the last awesome Snoop Dogg song, Smooth. After that, I don't know what happened mm. to Snoop Dogg, but that was the last awesome Snoop Dogg song. And I don't want to dream about getting paid with Nate Dogg. Um, yeah. You know, I, I could listen to that song and repeat over and over again. And that's an album that I can listen to all the way through um, uh, without stopping. That, that, to me, is a great album. And that had Let's Play House on it. Yeah, yep. 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 that's a great song, too. And a lot of people won't disagree, but I kind of look at that as the last great death row record. I know All Eyes on Me came after, um, but, but I can find faults in All Eyes on Me, where when you go Chronics, uh, Doggy Style, and Dog Food, I mean, those are so just so dynamic and groundbreaking. Those three records are almost like a triplets, you know, they're, yeah. they're so similar and they have the same vibe. So that's a wonderful pick. What do you got, Rip Black at eight? I have Ice Cube Predator. So Ice Cube, that's a hard one. That's one, that's why I didn't pick any like Too Short or like DJ Quick. I can't pick like certain ones, so I didn't pick those guys at all. And that's almost why I didn't pick Cube, because I like I like a lot of his shit, but um it was a good day it was amazing to me. And that is my favorite hip hop song of all time. So me too. Yeah. Me too. Nice. Yeah. I walked up to the store with my mom's little bit of money. And I bought the single on a cassette tape. And man, oh, I walked yeah. around town just listening <laughs> over and over. And that thing like yeah. changed my life. Yeah. And uh, I mean, it's got like Check Yourself. I don't, it doesn't have a lot of like big things on it. But Wicked. like, just for the fact that it had, it was a good day on it. And how bad, how much that impacted me. And it's Ice Cube. If he doesn't make this list for me, that's a sin. I don't. That album is my number 11 album. Like I, I wanted to put it on the list, but. Me too. I felt there was more complete albums than there are. Yeah. That, you know, right. I, I like I just, you know, I like Wicked. I love Today Was a Good Day. You know, I love Check Yourself, but you know, there's other it just seems like there was other stuff in there that wasn't wasn't as complete. I just let yeah. my heart I let my heart get into it too much, you know. <laughs> and like every time I think of Ice Cube and all of his albums, I'm like that one thing just like yeah. changed, you know. That one song, you know. And my my alarm clock is, ringtone is it was a good day. So I start with it every day. <laughs> there you go. You can never get tired. I never get tired of that song. No, never. No. I could hear it. It's one of the few songs that I can listen over and over and over again. And and it brings me joy. And my wife likes that song too, which is which is good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's timeless. You know, that album or that song could come out today and not sound dated. And it's yeah, it's it was still solid. Thirty years old, yeah. yeah. All right, we're at seven. I bet no one has this on that. Actually, this one, my list evolved and changed, and this one never made my list until I listened to it again, and it forced me to kick someone off to put this guy at number seven. 1996's Rapping Forte off parole. Oh, I love this album. That's a yes. great album. Great album. I, I came close. Awesome album. So 
artists that talk about, you know, real things, I have a certain vibe, I call it on the real songs. This is an on the real album. I mean, it's got such a distinct vibe. It's uh, like deep meaning songs, but it's still got the player vibe that Forte uh, was known for. And they had songs with a Too Short, Breed, uh, San Quinn, JT the Bigger Figure. Some of my favorite songs I wrote down was Never Talk Down. I paid my dues off parole, ain't no player, 25 to life. Um, it just has a vibe like not many albums have front to back. Just, I don't know how to explain it better than that, but I couldn't not put it on after I heard it. I'm like, this is just so damn great. It's got to make the list. So I put them in at number seven and kick someone else off. Good call. Uh, that's a good album. All right, Raven, what do you got at number seven? All right, so my number seven probably get fly for as low as it is, but it's Dr. Dre's The Chronic. Um, I felt like it has to be on the list. Obviously, it was very groundbreaking. It was very instrumental in the West Coast sound in general. Um, and you had RBX, Lady of Rage, uh, the Dog Pound, the DOC. You know, there was so many people on the album that all came together correctly. Um, and you, you hear Dre Day or, you know, nothing but a G thing, and you're going to know the song automatically, you know. Plus, it was really, uh, I loved the Easy e Dr. Dre, Ice Cube. I loved all their beef. Um, I loved them as a group, but I felt I like battle rap and I think that shit's fun. So I, I really enjoyed that aspect of the album too. I mean, no doubt it's, it's iconic. I know that's got to be high on your list, Brad. I know you're a big chronic guy. It didn't make my top 10. I had to, I had to, I had to, I had to you know, I it didn't make mine either. It didn't make mine either. It didn't make mine either. You you asked me doggy style or the chronic, remember? Right. And I told you doggy style of the chronic. I love the chronic though. Like oh. and I just had to make room for other things and I couldn't pick no every death row album. Right. Yeah, I just I couldn't. I mean, it almost made it just because it is what it is, but there are still some songs that I skip on the chronic, so that's why it didn't make my list. Uh, uh, yeah, I could see that. Right. But I mean, no doubt, it's one of the most iconic West Coast albums of all time. What do you got, Kane, at number seven? I got Dre 2001. Uh, ah, okay. I thought I couldn't leave it off the list because it brought a whole new group of kids to the West Coast rap. Like, I remember when it coming out and thinking, like, you guys don't know who Dr. Dre is? You think, like, this <laughs> is like, and they're like, this is so great, you know, and that's, you know, everybody knew, was getting to know who Eminem was. Right. And, um, it just was a very important album, I thought, in the West Coast uh, picture. I don't know the record sales, but I wouldn't be surprised if that outsold The Chronic. I mean, that, that was a big album when it came out. It was. It was huge. Beats are, like, I know it's Dre, but the beats right. are dope on it. Like, every yeah. single I'm like, damn, this is a dope beat. Damn, this is a dope beat. And talk about collaborations that had a lot of good collaborations on it too like you said eminem snoop was on exhibit yeah. king t uh mm -hmm. i think both members of the at least corrupts on it i know that um so what do you got at seven brad um i i picked uh and i i wanted to do a few like peripheral uh rappers who were aligned with like bigger name rappers so i put a the Lynch Mob Grill is in the mist, um, which is nice. one of my favorite nice. uh, West Coast albums. Um, and, and one, I don't skip a song from beginning to end. I'm not so much into their second album, but, but that first album, just, I, I don't And Cube he went on his, his guest verses on that album. He just sounds on fire. I love the way Cube raps during that era. And like You'll see I picked Death Certificate later as my Cube album. I think it's the same era. Just cute. The, his flow during that time period was awesome. And and those those guys that were um, in the Lynch Mob, I know, like, I think one of them got put in jail or prison JD. for murder. But, yep. yeah, J.D., I mean, that, that I don't they're awesome to me. I, I, it's, it's a great album. Well, and that's why the second one wasn't as good, because they J.D. went to jail, and they replaced him yep. with, uh, shoot, what was his name? Um, started with an M. But, anyways, they replaced him, and J.D. was the, the – bright spot of that group but you're right yep. i actually took that off to put forte on <laughs> though it originally made it i mean you're right there's nothing i skip on there so that's a good one i'm glad someone put it on their list all right rip what do you got at seven 
I have one that I can't even listen to anymore because when it came out, it was so big. Everybody listened to it and I got sick of hearing it. And it's the same as Kane's 2001. Uh... But here's why though, because we waited so long for that to come out. And when it came out, it was, yeah. It was, it was awesome. still fire. Yeah, it was so good, but like nobody stopped listening to it. You'd be yeah, going out the street, everybody's listening to it. Everywhere you go to where I was <laughs> like, I don't want to hear that song. And I, man, I can't listen to this, any of that. I might be able to listen to like one or two, maybe. I think one's got corrupt. I think, wasn't it like Ho a Housewife or whatever? You can't make a Ho a Housewife. But I'm like huge corrupt fan. He didn't make it on my list. I couldn't, I love corrupt. Like I listen to him all the time. Oh, Talk food almost made it, but like, I, I don't know. I could just listen to any corrupt at any given time, really. All right, coming up at number six in 1990. Two short, short dogs in the house. Yes, now, my, there you go. my heart yeah. wanted to do uh, Get In Where You Fit In, but I think this is the best version of Too Short, and I'll tell you why. Of course, he's most known for, you know, his, his bitch and, and explicit songs. But on this album especially, he had songs, the ghetto uh it's your life these what i call on the real songs and those were the singles and those are some of my favorite two short songs he also featured ice cube on a song at a time when you didn't see a lot of collaborations and i remember being like oh shit ice cube is on <laughs> on this new two short i think this is the best version of um two short and i think it's another iconic cover I can see a lot of inspiration, uh, doggy style coming from this cover. Oh, yeah. Um, so I got short dogs in the house. That's my two short album. Number six, what you got, Ray? Uh, mine is a bizarre ride to the far side from the far side. Underrated. Um, love that. Yeah, huge underrated. They had that lyrical. Um, I, I'm from the East Coast. I grew up on East Coast rap. Um, so groups, you know, like the DOC, he had the lyricism. Far Side had lyricism. Passing Me By is iconic. I can still listen to that song. It's on my playlist daily. Um, I think Jay Wright produced the whole album. Uh, I just, I love that album. I think uh, it was really refreshing during the, the gangster rap boom. Right. You know, groups like them and, uh, you know, Hieroglyphics. Del Funky Homo Sapien. Oh, yeah. Really showing yeah. that, you know, West Coast was more than just a gangbang rap. Hi, right, Kane, what you got at six? I got uh, Tupac, Me Against the World. Uh, I know we already talked about it a little right. bit, but um, I really feel Perfect. like it was Tupac's best album. And I feel that way because he he seems very real on it. He seems, you know, vulnerable talking about death around the corner, dear mama, you know, um, me against the world. Like I listen to me against the world to this day when I'm like having a bad day or whatever. Mm -hmm. like, it's, a very, it's a very, you know, good song for me to vent to. Like, right. I love that album. All right, what you got, Brad? Uh, <clears throat> number six is going to be Digital Underground Sex Packets. Oh, I'm so glad someone put <laughs> that yeah. on. I just Hell missed yeah. that one, too. <laughs> um, so I'll tell you why. First of all, I'm a, I'm a huge Tupac fan. And uh, it, which Tupac album to pick, you'll see when I get to it. But um, I, it, that was a hard decision. But, you know, Digital Underground is responsible for launching Tupac's career. But not only that, they also were like the first – that started doing that whole like parliament sample thing and making that popular. And they had the, uh, the Humpty dance, which is the, you know, was the top 40 hit, but they also had underwater rhymes, which was a fucking awesome song. And, see and, oh, yeah. <laughs> and then hands down the best sex rap song ever written freaks of the industry. That's it. Nothing beats freaks of the industry. That's why I made my list. Sure. Plus it has do what you like. Which, yeah, yeah, do what you like to. One of my favorite things ever in a song is, you know, like after the rapping part on Do What You Like, they start fading it for the, you know, radio stations. But if you're on a stoop with your homies, we'll bring it back. And, you know, they bring the song back. <laughs> oh, yeah. That yeah, was so creative and so great. Rest in peace, Shock G. I'm so Rest glad. In peace. I mean, uh, like yeah, you said, great one. samples. That is a great album. Love mm -hmm. when he says, uh, if your feet stink, don't do what you like. Go watch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a great album. Great. Uh, what you got, Riplax? Six. 
Oh, this one's a little night and day from that one. Um, you might have heard of this fella before, Ice T, Seventh Deadly Sin. Ah, okay. I was obsessed with that album, and like it just had such a different vibe. And um, I used to be so into like his movies, like his underground movies. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you ever watched those, but I watched. I used to yeah. buy every one of them, and like that album. I think there was stuff from that in his movies, and. I, I was obsessed with it. But then again, there's another like album with ads all over it. And it just had like random people talking in the beginning and everything, you know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I had to put Ice T on it because I love I love his music. But to me, it's hard to pick anything else because that's what I listen to all the time. That's a very underrated album because the average person would even think of that as an Ice T. And actually, one of my favorite verses he ever did is a song on there called God Forgive Me. And he just murders it. It, he murders it like he's never murdered a verse before. If, if any of you have never heard that, it's, it's called God Forgive Me. And it, it features two other people, but Ice just kills his verse. So that's awesome. I, I like that pick. Which puts us in the middle at number five. There's another one I, oh, I didn't know which of his albums to put on. But I went to 1993's King T, the Trifling album. Oh, this is the very first appearance of the Alcoholics. Tash wasn't in it yet, but it was J-Roll, E-Swift. They were on Bust That Ass, and I Got a Bad Y'all. Um, but this album featured Cube on two songs. I had always been a King T fan, but I kind of look at this as his most complete. His next one, uh, For Life, was the one I was going back and forth with. Because I, I actually think the production and beats are better on For Life. But Trifling Album has a special place in my heart. King T is the most underrated West Coast artist, period. He does not get remembered as the pioneer he truly is. Um, and for all these, I wrote down, you know, favorite songs. Drunk Technique, Got a Bad Y'all, Hole Before the Homie, Bust That Ass, uh, King T's Beer Stand. Uh, so that's what I got at five, King T the Trifling Album. What about you, Raven? Uh, mine would be um, Havoc and Prodigy Kicking Game from 1994. Um, Havoc the Mouthpiece and Prodigy were from South Central Cartel. This was their little side project. It still had like Havoc the Rhyme Son and Young Prod on like every damn song. So it was basically an SCC album. But Prodigy really like, he got really correct with making that uh, that G-Funk sound. Like I think he kind of rivaled Dre on some of his tracks on, on this era of SEC. Um, you had LV bringing hooks that I think almost could rival Nate Dogg. Um, but I'm a huge Havoc the Rhyme Son fan. He's one of my favorite West Coast rappers. So just for his inclusion on it and the beats from Prod, I had to go with Kicking Game. You know, a lot of people know LV from Gangsta's Paradise, but mm. a lot of people don't realize he was part of Soul Central Cartel. I mean, killing it. Right. No, that's great. I, South Central Cartel, again, doesn't get enough love because they yeah. embodied West Coast gangster rap. I mean, to a T. 100%. All right, Kane, what you got at number five? I got Dre the Chronic. Um, it was the first album. I know NWA, um, you know, from Southern California representing Compton. It was the first album that I remember that really was like, I'm from Compton. This is like, this is where I'm from and brought Compton to the mainstream. Um, Also, um, I think it was the first videos that I saw with uh, gold spoked rims and (laughs) drop top and pop. It was just, when I heard it when I was a kid, I was like, yeah, yeah, that's that's what I want to do. That's cool. I think it's the G thing video where he opens the fridge and it's just forties. Yeah. It's like 50, 40 <laughs> ounces in the, in the fridge. That's all that's in the fridge. I right, what you got, Brad, at five. So the rest, the rest of these, I'm just gonna I'm gonna pick in a random order because each one of them could be number one album for me, number two, three, four, five. But I, I want to. Uh, uh, you're wearing the West Side Connection shirt, mm-hmm. so I'm gonna go with that. We haven't talked about Mac 10. We haven't talked about Dub C, who also almost made my list well, with his yep. solo album, Wes Up. Um, and, but there, you know, if you pick West Side Connection, you kind of pick them plus, again, Cube, obviously. Uh, but that West Side Connection album is so fucking good. Mm-hmm. 
banger after banger, yeah. no skips. Um, it's so fire. They're so angry. And uh, it's kind of cool. Like uh, right before Tupac died, he actually kind of was like, he, met, he he was talking about West Side Connection. He was saying like Cube was copying him and his, because, you know, Cube kind of, it was interesting with Cube, right? He was with NWA and then he kind of went solo and had some beats done by some New York guys. And then right. he, in 95, he comes out with West Side Connection. And he's just, he's angry, you know? So it was an interesting album. The, the Cypress Hill beef was kind of cool on there as well, too. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he was beefing with somebody else, too. Q-tip I can't remember. From Tribe Called Q-tip, Quest. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He does some nasty shit with Q-Tip on there. Um, but I, I just, I, and, and I saw them live. I mean, uh, that that was an, uh, an awesome show, iconic show to see all three of those guys live uh, in Detroit. So I uh, had to pick them. Does and, see his nasty solo, man. I love He's it. so nasty. I could have put almost three different Dub C albums in my top 10. I mean, you know, the shadiest one, Curb Serving, the first Man Curb Circle Man. album, and Ain't a Damn Thing Changed. I mean, Dub C, another, talk about underrated. Dub C is completely underrated. Now I'm mad I didn't get him on my list. <laughs> He's an honorable mention to it. The shadiest one is probably my favorite. I don't know, curbs. It's too hard to pick. We, my friend and I used to smoke weed and listen to Curb Servant. Yeah, uh, that's a really good album to smoke weed to. That's all I can say about that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, what you got, Rip? Like at number five? I mean, we're gonna just talk about this again, quick. But me against the world. Um, so, uh, you know, my mom passed away, and like, I gave her again a cassette of the single, but. <laughs> I went out to that store and I got her the single and I went and found her and gave it to her. Um, my brother dedicated to her when it came out. And so I karaoke that song. And like I said, my sister got me that CD for Christmas or something. And I was like, not even really that into Pac or anything. And I, yeah, like I said, I, I just, that was the first song I memorized with a hip hop song, like Foley. And I was like, all right. I mean, so it means a lot to me. And the whole thing's right. good. Old school. I love like, old school. I love uh, school. Fuck the fuck world. The world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, fuck the screen. Fuck the, Like, is it that, yeah. that beat sounded like a Sonic video game, like a Sega game and shit? <laughs> right. I mean, I, I don't know yet. So that's that's what I got to say about that. I know we've discussed it a couple of times already, but that's why I love that. Um, and um, also... Uh, all Eyes on Me obviously almost made it because that's so iconic of an album it from is. the West Coast and the world. But you, you know what Pac album almost made? I, I don't have any Tupac. Is the Strictly 4 album. Mm-hmm. I think right that's up. my personal favorite version of Pac. And plus it's got Keep Your Head Up. Uh, I is get violent around. On that song? Is that Violent song on there? No, that's on Topocalypse Now. Yeah, I think mm. that song's crazy. It's such bad quality, but that song is so good. Number four. One of the most, probably the best, even better than Dre, hip hop producers slash rappers who can do it both at a high level. 95's DJ Quick, Safe and Sound. Yeah. Like you said, his debut is awesome. It's iconic. And my heart kind of wanted to do that. But I think Safe and Sound is his most complete, almost perfect album. He was actually supposed to sign with death row he recorded like sure nice he's a producer but it was something with his deal with profile or whatever and you'd think sugar would have just went and scared him like he did everyone else when he wanted <laughs> something but they couldn't get him on death row but he was <clears throat> produced made this in death row studios um he's made so it's, i almost look at it as a death row record but it's so complete and like i said i think he rivals as far as producers slash rappers who can do both at a high level I mean, it's hard to beat DJ Quick. Um, and plus, this has one of the top five diss songs in hip-hop history, in my view. Dollars and Cents, the MC8 diss song. I mean, he just murders MC8. And the 8 Quick uh, feud is one of my top three hip-hop feuds of all time. I think sometimes people forget about it, uh, but they really want to add each other. But songs I got is Dollars and Cents. Can I Eat It, the song that tells you not to eat the coochie. Get At Me, <laughs> Safe and Sound, Summer Breeze, Digging You Out. I mean, great album, great album. I felt, I felt like I was sending not putting DJ on there. He's so iconic and just so good at everything, man. 
All right, Raven, what you got in four? Um, so I went like I was going to go like with Bradley. I was going to go with West Side Connection, but I ended up going Ice Cube Death Certificate because I didn't want to clutter it with too much cube. Um, 91, I think. I mean, no Vaseline by itself. That was that was some burning shit for the era. Um, but Dalm also started some of Cube's more like uh, the soulful sampling that he likes to do. And um, it wasn't all as gangster and hardcore as America's uh, Most Wanted. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I I love that album. Uh, you know what? Steady Mobbin, The Wrong One to Fuck With, Nappy Dugout. Um, there's a lot of just hardcore songs on there. Yeah, I think that's his most complete work. And he will be showing up on my list, that album. Uh, <laughs> nice. No Vaseline is the best diss song, period. I don't care what anyone period. says. Period. It'll never right. be topped. Never be topped. Uh, although, hit him up is a close second that's very very close i'll give you that very close <laughs> yeah they're both both high level i right, came what you got at number four i got the game the documentary i'm so glad it made it oh that's a nice. good album yeah it's a great album i felt like it you know brought the west coast back and maybe that's just my opinion maybe there was a lot of stuff going on that i don't remember but i remember him coming back and being like I'm from Compton, like, and I was like, yeah, yeah. He had, you know, the cover, he's sitting on the gold spokes. I'm like, yeah, all that, like, and he's dope, mm -hmm. you know. I I was listening to a bunch of game just today, and I'm like, he's so skilled. He's so dope. He's, his lyrics are so cool. And, you know, I, I was listening to LAX today, and I'm like, ah, oh, that's, that's really good too. <laughs> like, what do we <laughs> but I do like the documentary more. You you hit it right on the nail because I think I felt the same way when that album came out. Kind of like, oh, this reminds me of early '90s West Coast gangster rap. Yeah. And that was another one that was on my list that didn't make it, but it was in. If we did a top twenty, that album would have been on it. All right, Brad, what you got? I, I'm just gonna I'm gonna go get. Uh, death certificate out of the way that's that's my I, I have a lot of ice cube uh, you know probably my second favorite rapper of all time you know scarface is my first right. but uh, ice cube and so that's there's a just pick. a lot of yeah you know, there, there, there's a lot of ice cube on my list there's a lot of ice cube that didn't make my list should have made my list but death certificate is his most complete work it's non-skippable I mean, everything that everyone said. I also saw him live uh, at Lollapalooza when he was uh, performing that album. So another uh, another uh, live album I saw. So Yeah, Cube is great live. I saw him in 98. You know, I've seen probably not as many shows as you, Brad. You've, you've seen like everyone. Um, but I've been to a lot of hip hop shows and Cube just, he kills it. Sometimes you get these big, big names and they kind of just coast through. I've seen that with a lot of people. But Cube is great live. I mean, great. It's awesome. Yeah. Yep. I would have loved to see him live. I never have, but. I didn't either. And I'm sure today he's probably not, you know, as good live as he was, you know, back in the day when he was putting out a certificate and stuff like that. Uh, all right. What you got, Rip Black? Number four. It's, it's, uh, I got doggy style, man. Like, I don't, I feel weird putting it on there. I think it's another one I got kind of sick of a little bit, but like. You know, even back then, I just, I think I just listened to it for too long, too much or something, but it just had all that character and obviously the production by Dre and everything like that. But like, that's what I, I don't know, it really popped to me. And I, I loved listening to it as a kid. Mm -hmm. I, I think, think it's it another one that you can't skip. Right. Yeah. No, right. No skips. Epic. That is a great album. Murder Was a Case is probably my favorite Snoop song. Um, although serial I like the killer. remix from the album soundtrack probably better, but mm. uh, he does Lottie Dottie, uh, obviously Gin and Juice, and What's My Name. Yeah, that's another music video. Music videos, too, though. Like, the music videos back right. then, too. Like, awesome. I just loved watching them. Just, it's, it was cool as a kid, just seeing them. Like, it made me want to go to the West Coast, you know? I was like, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, I wanted to drink more, yeah. too. <laughs> that's why I started at 11. <laughs> but anyway, but really, yeah, like, I don't know. It just had character, man. And it was Snoop. Like, Snoop was just this character. He just came out, like, right. just some smooth-ass, like, gangster slash. I don't know, man. And, I love them. You know, I talk about iconic album covers. That's another one. I mean, right. so iconic, that, that album cover. All right, we made it to the top three. 
NWA straight out of Compton. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It has yeah. to make yeah. it so iconic. Um, kind of like I said with Power, this came out the same year, 88. Um, Gangsta Rap really wasn't even a title yet. It was so new. And um, NWA just smacked you in the face. Things like Fuck the Police just... Even though rappers now, the few years before, were cussing or talking, you know, like crime rhyme, to just come out, fuck the police and be gangsta gangsta and straight out of Compton. I mean, just it's like they punched everyone in the face with the things they were saying. And there could be maybe some debate, but I don't think a, a group has ever had that much talent in one group. The original version with Cube. And um, I know DOC did some work. Uh, behind the scenes writing for that record Arabian mm-hmm. Prince was on the one song he originally was a member and, and and skirted out Ruthless Records to me always even though they're run didn't last as long I always look like Ruthless Records as the West Coast version of Def Jam I mean I think East Coast old school hip hop I think Def Jam I think old school West Coast hip hop I think Ruthless, Ruthless Records and obviously when Easy died mm-hmm. his wife kind of fucked it all up and it, it went down to the toilet, but there's really not much else to say. It's that that iconic. It's such a snapshot of time. I mean, yeah. it just embodies West Coast 1988. I mean, songs, I might as well just say like that's my number three as well. So yeah. pretty much nailed it. It was just it was uh, um, just crazy you know especially like as a kid hearing them hearing all that shit and then kind of knowing the story i love i love the movie yeah i Straight thought they did a good job too. i thought they did a really good job so? i was wondering how much stuff was really you know true yeah. or how much was for the movie when i was watching it well i know they had like dre and ren and cube like a consult yeah mm-hmm. so it's got to be somewhat I think it would have been a little different of a movie if Easy, Easy was still alive. I think he would have had, you know, no, oh, you're not man, gonna me in that type of life. Right. You know, Make it look like a bitch. <laughs> look Shug Knight. <laughs> yeah. And we got Shug Knight the- back in the spotlight with that movie too. Yeah, yeah. Back in prison because of that movie. <laughs> <laughs> it on the set where he ran dude over. Yeah, and- it is. It already hit the guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he was good to us at the time. <laughs> And the one thing I always have heard about Straight Outta Compton is people say it's a perfect record except for something to dance to. And I actually like something to dance to. That's the one song with Arabian Prince. And I know it sounds like it should have been made in 1983 and (laughs) nothing like the rest of the record. And I don't know why. I just kind of always like that record. So I'm not afraid to admit it. I'll even bump the last track, something to dance to. (laughs) Oh, yeah. All right, Raven, what you got at three? Um, so this one was super tough. Um, I just wanted to go with one album. It should have been Easy Does It, probably, but I'm going to go with Easy E. It's on Dr. Dre, 187, I'm Killer, from 93. Um, when I think about hard-hitting gangster rap, that's the one CD that pops into my head immediately. Um, there was every song except for, like, Give Me That Nut was just a fire towards Dre and Snoop and anybody. And they gave us BG Naka and Dresa, who were fucking awesome rappers on their own. Their album almost made my list as well. Um, I mean, any last words? It's, like, the my favorite fucking song from Easy e Easy does it almost made it because that's, that's the whole reason I rapped. 93, when I found that, that tape is when I decided I wanted to do that, too. Mm-hmm. But any last words was just way, you know, that um, the whole album, but especially any last words, it's just too fucking hard. I played the shit out of that CD. It was supposed to be a double album. I think he was calling it like temporary insanity. Um, but when Dre put out Dre Day, he had to get something out in response. So right. the CD yeah. just it lit that shit on fire too. So. Yeah, that's probably easy at his best. That's probably yeah. easy at his best. I came what you got at three. Uh, West Side Connection, Bow Down. Um, I know nice. we already talked about it some, but it just you just don't skip a song on it. And no. I really think um, they all add to each other. I think them being, you know, as big as they were individually and then coming together and meshing so well together to do that, uh, amazing. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. We had talked about the nine inch nail sample in that, in that record right. too. It was pretty cool right. that they did that. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great album. I mean, as gangsta as gangsta can get, that was that connection album. All right. What you got, Brad? 
Um, all right, so uh, I'm gonna go with, uh, geez, this is tough. I'm gonna go with doggy style for my number three. Um, the uh, you know the chronic didn't make the list and that's i couldn't pick every death row album but right. i i didn't pick the chronic because i do skip some songs in the chronic but the chronic is the album that got me into hip-hop but snoop dogg's doggy style is an album <clears throat> for me and i never got tired of i probably played it as much as uh mm. as anybody and uh re- on repeat for years in fact in college they all my friends called me Snoop Dogg because all I did was listen to Doggy <laughs> Style. I just, I, I love that album. Snoop was fucking cool as hell. Um, uh, the, he raps so well. The beats were awesome. Um, uh, it's it just, it's an incredible, uh, it, it, to me, it's it's the, the best death row. Uh, well, no, it's the best death row, like that first three era of those albums. Um, so I had to include it in my uh in my top 10 i love it definitely snoop in his prime i mean we really That's, never got that version of snoop after that you know a little bit i bought that. album after album after album after album i even bought the last i mean i listened to the last album when he got back on death row records thinking okay this will be it i haven't listened <laughs> to that new one yet it, it's not it starts it's not. off strong it starts yeah, it off does. strong first four songs are pretty good yeah you're right yeah, they sound like, classic but then it just goes to hell yeah it yeah. was that rhythm and there's one you put out like rhythm and rhythm something. and gangsta it, it was really yeah. bad that one was yeah. one of the worst albums i've ever heard from anyone but it had dropped didn't is that the one that had dropped it like it's i hot, think that had dropped it like it's yeah hot. you know the, the last meal has some bangers on it it does. It's yeah. it's it's it got does. some really good ones, yeah. Uh, but it's not complete, like you know, doggy style. And I remember when Dog Father came out, buying that right away and being like, "What the hell happened?" I'm so disappointed. <laughs> yeah. So this disappointed. Like doggy style. <laughs> oh, your number three, Rip Black, was three out of Compton too, right? Yeah. All right. We talked about this one multiple times. My number two, 90, 1991's Death Certificate. It is the most oh, yeah. complete Ice Cube album. You know, I might in my heart like a lot of predator better but that certificate is is the most complete album and it has one of my favorite ice cube songs on it doing dumb shit i just always <laughs> thought that was the coolest song ever um you know just a kid growing up doing dumb shit like we all did and oh, i yeah. love posse cut colorblind i mean cam king t dub c jd from the lynch mob deadly threat such a great song. And like we talked about no Vaseline, steady mobbing, giving up the nappy dugout, true to the game. I mean, we could keep going, but I had death certificate at number two. What you got, Raven? I guess I'm kind of like a, an average rap guy because I chose America's Nightmare from Spice One uh, from 94. Um, I think that's his best album. Aunt Banks and Blackjack just fucking murdered the beats in that album. You know, they had a lot of Dre inspiration, I felt like. Um, you know, T Boy's got love for me with E40 was a fucking banger. Jealous got me strapped with Tupac was a fucking banger. Face of a Desperate Man. Um, I just think it, it might be some of his best lyrical work. Um, really, the only song I like more than anything on that album is Born to Die from the Tales from the Hood soundtrack. That's a dope soundtrack. Yeah, that's, I think that made my list. And I was like, well, it's kind of cheating because it's a soundtrack. So I mm-hmm. removed it. But uh, that song, it's, that, that song's fucking hard. But yeah, I think America's Nightmares has it's just some of his most cohesive sound and work. Yeah, that had strap on the side, which was probably one yep. of my, oh, that's a great song. That's yeah. a great song. Okay. And the uh the DJ Poo uh, or MC Poo this song, you know you don't fuck yeah. up is on there. <laughs> no, you, you can't argue that. That's a great album. D Boy's got love for me is just amazing. It's amazing. That's one of his best songs for sure. So hard. I can't what you got at number two. I got uh Kendrick Marr. Good kid, Mad City. I love the story that goes with it. You know, I love that you listen to it from front to back and it tells the whole story about him getting in trouble, going to see this girl and getting talked to um, by that lady and she makes him pray and, and every song just matches up and goes through it. His messages in a lot of the songs are so good. It had to make the list. It's, it's uh, yeah. it, it it was almost my number one. Wow. wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Stan, I, I know he's huge. I don't know if he's one of them. I put him in the same. As far as not not, they're not the same as MCs, 
But as far as how I view him, I put him in the same bucket as I put Little Wayne is I just don't get I just don't get it. I don't get why people think he's so great. And that's how I feel about Little Wayne. When people say Little Wayne's a top three lyricist, I don't see it. I just don't get it. So I just didn't get uh, Kendrick Lamar. So I've, I listened to some of his stuff, but not deeply because I, it just never resonated with me. But I know a lot of people love him and, and no, think he's amazing MC. I tried really hard to get into Kendrick. I, yeah. I bought all the early stuff from his independent label. And I was like, well, Dre's producing it. Just it something. And that's awesome. That's on your list. It just, mm -hmm. it just didn't make it for me. But I will say, you might not like Little Wayne as a lyricist, but Little Wayne is Little Wayne is fucking fun. I love listening to Little Wayne. Well, no, he's obviously he's an, not, he's an entertainer. But people always put him with lyricists. You know, when I think of lyricists, I don't think of people like him. But as no, he makes know. good puns, he makes good puns, but that's mm. about it. Well, what do you got at number two? Doug me? Yeah, yeah. I guess I should say what Doug did. <laughs> can't you um, see who's on my screen <laughs> all right so um I, i'm gonna put two i'm gonna have tupac's album that i chose and i'll say this uh I, I didn't pick the first two tupac albums i think he was learning the craft and they're they're okay albums i don't listen to him as much but once you get to me against the world all eyes on me thug life which we mm. you know, i know it's more of like a posse mm. thing but man that album could have made my list and then Machiavelli, and it's it, it, and it's really like I had to go with the album that I listened to the most, and it's All Eyes on Me, and and that's a double album that is like every fucking song. There might be one song to skip, but if you skip one song in a double album, I mean, so how many double albums? Like one whole album sucks. There's not a sucky album on that. I mean, one or two. I think I really like the second album best first and i played that out and then i was like let me listen to the first one and i was like fuck the first one's fire and now i like the first one better yeah. so um and and then uh how i got into rap and forte was only god can judge me that his verse on that album is so fucking good that song that song is my favorite tupac song so i was like who is this rap and forte guy and i went and bought off parole and that's how i got that album so um, so I chose All Eyes on Me. I, I, I'm the the uh, typical average rap fan that chose that one. <laughs> oh, it, it's his most iconic record. You can't argue with that. All right, Rip Black, what you got at two? All right, so I had 2001 already, but you can't have that without having the chronic. And that is my number two. It was, on honestly, it was my number one for a little bit, but I changed it. I just, yes, yeah, it was just... Like, like when you're doing the K Reno interview, it's ahead of its time with production and everything. Like it was, that's something we weren't ready for. And it came out and it was, I mean, that's what led up to doggy style and everything. I mean, it was just iconic. And the chronic was so well planned. Like where does he come up with these artists? He has featured on them all of a sudden. And he has out all of nowhere, production. right? He worked really hard before he put that out. You can tell. Right. A lot of preparation. Yeah. It's cool. There's like a, like a hidden track or bonus track that's not listed on the uh, on the album and it's a it's an awesome track right at the mm -hmm. end that um bitches ain't shit or i don't even know what it's called but it's <laughs> right that's a, 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 and snoop's snoop's verse on that 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 one is is awesome and then the one with bushwick bill where he like does the intro and intro the outro, right. um that track is fire too like everyone is so um just that that's one of my favorite hip-hop tracks of all time all right, this all led us to number one, and which won't surprise anyone, my number one, the greatest album of all time, I don't care what anyone says, 1991's Ice-T Original Gangster. Mm. This album literally changed my life. This is the album that made me want to rap. I mean, I was writing, so this came out in 91. In 1990, I did write a rap about the Super Bowl with the Bills and Giants. And it was like a Giants diss song because I liked Thurman Thomas. Um, but this is when I kind of started getting serious. And I was a I, big Ice-T fan before this. But this is just Ice-T perfection in, in my mind. This is one of those tapes that, you know, when they start tearing because you're looking at the lyric sheet so much. This was one of those tapes where you couldn't even see the writing on the tape anymore. This was just a tape I played nonstop. 
and and this isn't a slight at like NWA, but to me, NWA were street reporters. They were reporting what was happening on the street, what these people on the street were doing, and they were great at it. The, maybe the best at it. But to me, Ice-T was that guy on the street who was doing those things. You believed he was that hustler. He was that pimp. He was that gangster. And OG is just is just perfect, in, in my opinion. It'll always be my favorite album. Um, nothing will ever come close to it. And yes, it had the big hits, New Jack Hustler and OG Original Gangster. But anyone is not totally familiar with this album, you got to check out Midnight because it's a prequel to his uh, hit Six in the Morning. It starts at midnight. He goes through all this shit. And the last line is the first line of Six in the Morning. Right. It was so fucking clever. I mean, I can remember hearing that for the first time as a kid and the light bulb going off. I'm like, oh, holy shit. That's so amazing. <laughs> So OG will always be my favorite album. I got the tattoo and even an Ice-T OG tattoo. I was surprised you didn't have more Ice-T on your list. Well, that was a problem. I didn't want to have it be all Ice-T because it could have been. <laughs> I could have easily put a couple more Ice-T on it, but I was trying to diversify. What do you got, Raven? You're number one. <sighs> all right. So I scratched off Ice-T Original Gangsta. Uh, which was originally going to be number one. Nice. It's, it is one of the most just perfected Ice-T West Coast albums, period. Um, but I went with South Central Cartel and Gats We Trust from 1992 or 1993. Um, same reasons I loved Kicking Game and Murder Squad Nationwide. Uh, Prodigy makes amazing beats. Um, you had, what, Mavic, Havoc the Mouthpiece made some beats. Um but you got tracks like Bring It On, Gang Stories, Gangsta Team. Um, it's an SEC thing, the uh, original version. Like, it's Ice-T and them are on the album, too. So it's, I don't know, it, to me, it's it's one of the best examples of just well-rounded cross between G-Funk and Gangsta music from the early 90s. Um, those beats I would have put up against Warren G's or Daz's any day. So Yeah, like we talked about before, Gangsta Team just... You gotta yeah. check that out, Brad. I, it's just amazing that song. I right, Kane, what is your number one? Number one is Snoop Dogg Doggy Style. Um, still just a complete front to back album. You know, it comes on on the shuffle, and every time I shut the shuffle off and let it play from wherever it starts <laughs> all the way to the end, it is. It is a complete album. I love the skits, the W balls. That, that <laughs> yeah. Was, yeah. I, and just the uh, the whole G-Funk thing that he brought. And it just, it's, when I think of West Coast rap, I think of Doggy Style. What do you got for your number one, Brad? Um, all right. So I, I chose, so we, I told you I was listening to NWA and my choice was easy. And I, I, and I had, I was like, okay, is it straight out of Compton or easy does it? And I went with easy does it. And uh, I, it's a, I had an interesting kind of way to get to that number one. Um, when I first started listening to hip hop, I, it was Dre who got me into hip hop. I didn't know dick about nwa or easy and, and to me easy was a punk and i didn't oh, listen to his music so i missed that i missed that ep i was like i'm not buying that fucking ep because this is the guy <laughs> easy he's a punk you know and um uh, i ended up picking up easy does it i i was out with my friend and and a bunch of people have been like easy does it is the best hip-hop album and i was like no he's he's a he's a bitch he's a punk whatever <laughs> but for some reason you know and i was at a record store and i was like ah oh, there's the record i'll just buy it and listen to it and i put that cd in and i was like oh this isn't bad <laughs> and then listen to it more and more and more i'm like holy shit and to to this day if i think about do i want to listen to nwa or do I want to listen to Easy E? I go with Easy Does It. Partly, and partly, it's that something to dance to track that made me not. <laughs> not I know no one likes it but me. I'm the only person. <laughs> I know. I'm like, if it wasn't for that track, I might have gone with Straight Outta Compton. But I don't know. Easy Does It. It's awesome. The fucking skits are awesome. It sounds so good. It actually doesn't even sound as dated 
as straight out of Compton, like beat wise, if you think about that. Um, uh, I don't know. And I just love Easy's voice, that melodic kind of high pitched voice. Um, So I I went with that as my number one. I'm glad it made someone move. Nobody move. Yeah, nobody move. (laughs) Yeah, that was probably the first hip song I ever memorized. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a dope song. Had to right. leave no more questions was the shit too. Yeah, no more questions was awesome. That whole premise of doing it like that, like an interview, is fucking right. Crazy. That should have made my list. There was just too many. Ten wasn't enough. That was my problem. <laughs> you had to leave a lot of artists out, and Easy was one of them because I was like, Yeah, oh, I, I know. I love his music. What do you got in number one? All right, Ray Black. So I have the game, the documentary, because mm-hmm. nice. Wow, it's it's huge because um i was the type that you know i would hear someone on a song like who's that well that's how i got into like the outlaws back when i was listening to tupac and i had the young noble on me had the game on it and i'm like who's that guy that was when he was with um get low and i listened to all his like just raw underground west coast hip-hop i was super into the game and then he signed with dre and i was like damn i heard him on the radio i was like hell yeah that came out and like I was high as hell and I just like was mesmerized. I was, man, that whole thing is amazing. And like if you can make a song where I don't skip Tony Yeo's verse, you got a good album. <laughs> <laughs> that <laughs> sums it up perfectly. <laughs> that sums it up perfectly. But here's oh. but here's what game did with that though. Like they got in the beef, but like then he started coming out and he did bring the West Coast back like that. He did. And he came out with like those disses for 50. He had like um Kendrick and J Rock and like all these guys are fucking huge now. And like, I mean, he had, there's a lot. I could go on. He's got a lot of people like that he helped bring up. And then the West Coast was kind of hitting again. Well, there's two more things. I told Surreal I would read the list out just so at least gets out there. I'll just I'll just read them. Number 10, he's got Ice-T's Home Invasion, which is another great mm-hmm. album. Number nine, he's got Del Funky Homo Sapien. I wish my brother George was home or here. I like No Need, uh, no need for Alarm better. Number eight, he's got The Alcoholics Liquidation. Number seven, he's got Spice One's America's Nightmare. Number six, he's got Dre Dog, the new Jim Jones. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. I don't know how familiar all you are with Grey Dog. He had an album called I Hate You With a Passion, which was just a great album title. Uh, Number five is NWA's For Life album. Number four is Easy Does It. Number three is Quick Is The Name. Number two is The Cypress Hill Self-Titled. And his number one, Death Certificate. Nice. Oh, yeah. And the only other thing is I had a thing of honorable mentions. If it made no one's list, I just wanted to give them some love. Now, this is the first one I'm going to say. A lot of you pro- maybe haven't even heard this album. Maybe none of you have. Rodney O and Joe Cooley's Get Ready to Roll. I love that album. You know that I was kind hot. of a big record in Detroit. Right. There, we, uh-huh. we listen to that. Yeah. I got Hobson's Raw album. I know a lot of people feel different mm. about Hobson, but that Raw album, I love that album. Uh, we did that. We did that. MC Ren, Shock of the Hour, didn't get mentioned. Yeah. Everyone talked about California artists. I wanted to show some love to Sir mix Mac Daddy album. Forget Baby Got mm-hmm. Back. Every song on there is just amazing. Cam's Never Again. And we talked about Dub Scene in the game. That wraps up our first hip-hop roundtable. I appreciate it. Hope you guys had fun with it. Oh, yeah. It was awesome. I think yeah, I'm going to do it. a great time. Yeah. Well, I'm going to do one every month. I got 10 or 15 ideas already of cool lists and, you know, Hip hop soundtracks, posse cuts, EPs, like I said, of course, East Coast, uh, Midwest, Southern, you know, lists like this. When I, when I was going through this and thinking of people, I kept going to East Coast rappers. I'm like, no, no I, I'd love, I'd love to do an East Coast list. I would love, love, love to do an East I'll Coast sure, list. I'll make sure I'll make sure I get you on that one. So fuck yeah. Thanks for the time. I'm gonna sign off now and go watch the Milwaukee Bucks game that I'm taping. All right, appreciate Dude. it. Yeah. Thanks, brother.
Yo, Yo Surreal the MC. Surreal the MC. Rearrange. Rearrange. Yo. Still a B boy, like a gray short of an A. Metaphor 3 2 1. Quarter the day. More to display, keep the hoarders away Grabbing mics like cranberries with an ocean of spray Old school like KFC, just get in the van Streaking Snoop's friends hat, don't mention it man Head spin, back break, neck speed, pop lock Jaws drop, fresh vest, bomb squad, hang shot Yes, you make no sense, what you trying to say? Pay to play, we outside, just dying to play I said play twice, though three times when I rhyme Off topic again it's the sign of the times, finally mine Surreal? Me, myself, de la soul But ice with snowballs, yo, I'm way too cold Still a b-boy for life, till death do his part Come back, spray paint, real fresh from the start Still a b-boy, from the old to the new Still a b-boy, too bold for the school Still a b-boy, east coast to the west B-boys worldwide, we supposed to be blessed Still a b-boy, from the old to the new Still a b-boy, too bold for the school Still a b-boy, east coast to the west B-Boys Worldwide